I think we're finally approaching a time in human history where uh, we accept at the level of you know the scientific community all the way through to wellness and just generally that the brain and body are are intimately linked at the level of what you you know if you want to improve your body um do something for your mind if you want to improve your mind do something for your body and and it's so clear now what we all need to do i mean we we can get into the details but at a macro level it's clear that we should all be getting that 150 to 200 minutes of zone 2 per week or walking a lot. If you live in a big city, you're probably getting that. But then also getting your heart rate up to, to you know max heart rate once a week, doing some sprint type stuff on in whatever format is safe for your body. Some people it's swimming, some people it's rowing, some people it's running. For me, it's running, but you know not everyone enjoys running or can do it. And then everyone should be doing at least six sets of resistance training per muscle group per week, minimum. Hard sets. To failure, okay, maybe, maybe not. Close to failure, yeah, probably. And it's especially the groups that have been, um, let's just say averse to weight training, right? Typically women, el older folks, although now more women weight train because they understand that in the absence of a lot of injected or prescription anabolic hormones, they're not gonna get um, in enormous. That's the um, funniest thing for me. That's why we died, I think, right? That that concept that, you know, if, if you one lifts weights that they're gonna be get Become huge. bulky. Do yeah. you realize to all of the women who are out there that are concerned about lifting weights because they're going to get too bulky, do you know how hard I've worked to try and desperately become bulky for 15 years? Like I've worked really, really difficult, hoping that one day I'll become bulky. And there is, I think it's dissipating a lot now, but there was for a long time, this fear that, oh, do a couple of bicep curls and you're gonna look like the Incredible Hulk. It's like, right. me and my friends have really, really prayed for that to happen forever. Uh, you do not need to be concerned. It, it's not gonna creep up on you and one day you're gonna wake up right. and be this sort of vascular beast. Right, um, a couple of things about that. I mean, it, from a longevity standpoint, we know that maintaining healthy nerve to muscle function, neuromuscular junctions is one of the things that resistance exercise does. And it's highly correlated with cognitive function into older age. Um, and for those people, I guess going back to our earlier conversation, we'll probably do this a few times in the course of, of, of this episode, but, um, the thing you want to do the least, that's actually the thing that where you stand to build up your AMCC the most. Mm. So for me, that would be language learning or learning of musical instruments. Two two things that I love music and I um, but I I just it's just so hard for me. So it's it sits there on the shelf as a possible way to activate the AMCC. But in terms of actual uh resistance training, resistance training has an interesting property that I haven't heard discussed before, um, that pertains to men and women who do it, um, which is unlike cardiovascular training. During a resistance training bout, because of the blood flow to the muscle, the so-called pump, you get a little window into what the potential progress would look like. That pump dissipates post-workout, and then yeah, yeah. If, if you allow sufficient rest and nutrition, et cetera, you'll get a hypertrophy response. But it's so unlike other forms of exercise. Like if I go to a yoga class and I stretch or I'm doing some movement, I get to that limit where I'm quaking and I fall over. It's very different than getting a picture of just how flexible I will be the yes, next time yes, yes. and then losing that until I adapt. Yeah. With running your lungs, sometimes your throat burns as you pointed out, and that's showing you your limit. And of course, then there's an adaptation response that then allows you to perform at that level without the burning the next time, right? If you allow sufficient recovery. But with weight training, it's kind of interesting. The whole pump thing was never something that I really drew me to weight training very much, but it's interesting because you get a glimpse into what the, the progress might look like. And so for, I would say for anyone who's worried about getting too big, unless your pump is bigger than you want to be, yeah, you're not yeah, gonna yeah, get yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you actually get a window into um, how much potential size increase you're gonna create. But it's so different than other forms of exercise in that way. It's like, what other thing in life, like if you took a language class and you're like, oh, I'm gonna learn Japanese and you go and during the class, you actually become fluent for a moment, then it's taken away and then yeah, you adapt yeah, yeah. and become fluent. So it's it's a very special form of exercise that, that offers some unique um, gifts to us as incentives for going back. But look, as I say this, I realize some people hate resistance training, they love mm -hmm. running. Some people hate running, um, they love resistance training. Some people I realize hate exercise, yeah. but if you hate exercise, you should do it anyway. AMCC. And you're getting the AMCC. So 